Hello students, myself Mamta from DePaul School. Today I am going to begin Standard 8 English Literature Lesson 1 The Adventure of the Speckled Bag. Before we begin the story, let us know something about the author. The Adventure of the Speckled Bag is written by author Fanon Doyle. He was a Scottish writer and physician. He was famous for his series of short stories featuring the detective Sherlock Holmes dealing with murder by unusual means. He also created a set of fantasy and science fiction adventures. Then let us know the theme. The theme in the story is good versus evil. Dr. Rowlett represents evil and Sherlock Holmes is a force for good. It also deals with the themes of parental greed, inheritance and freedom. Then comes the characters in the story. The characters present in the story are Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Grimsby Rowlett, Helen Stoner, Julia Stoner and John H. Watson. Before we begin the story, let me tell you the story in brief. The Adventure of the Speckled Band is otherwise known as a locked room mystery. The Adventure of the Speckled Band is the eight Sherlock Holmes short stories. Sherlock Holmes investigates the case of a young bride-to-be whose sister was murdered and Helen Stoner's sister Julia died shortly before her wedding and Helen suspects that their stepfather Rowlett is the culprit. Helen now worries for her own safety so she turns to Holmes for help as she fears for her life. Holmes agrees to take the case. He then receives a visit from an irate Rollert who threatens him. Holmes discovers that Rollert wants his stepdaughters dead so that he can keep their inheritance. Rollert now sends a poisonous snake, that is the speckled band, through the ventilator to kill Helen. But Holmes intervenes and the snake ultimately kills Rollert instead. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson rise unusually early one morning to meet Helen Stoner, a young woman who, who forms that her, who fears that her life is being threatened by her stepfather. Sir Grimsby Rollert, a doctor who practiced in India and who was married to Helen's mother there. Helen's sister has died almost two years earlier, shortly before she was to be married. Helen had heard her sister's dying words, the speckled band, but had been unable to understand their meaning. Now, Helen too is engaged and she has begun to hear strange noises and to observe strange activities at Stockmoring, the state where she and her stepfather lived. So Rollet does keep strange company at the state. He befriends a band of gypsies on the property and keeps as pets a chetak and a baboon. For some time he has been making modifications of the house. Before Helen's sister's death, he had modified, made inside the house and now he is having the outside wall repair, forcing Helen to move into the room where her sister died. Holmes listened carefully to Helen's story and agrees to take the case. He plans to visit to the manor later in the day before leaving. He is visited by Rollett who threatens him not to interfere.
at Stoke Moran, Holmes inspects the premises carefully. Among the strange features that he discovers are a bed anchored to the floor, a bell cord that does not work and the ventilator hole between Helen's room and that of Royland. Holmes and Watson arrange to spend the night in Helen's room. In darkness they wait. Suddenly a slight metallic noise and a dim light through the ventilator prompt Holmes to action. Quickly lighting a candle, he discovers on the bell cord the speckled band. A poisonous snake. He strikes the snake with a stick, driving it back through the ventilator. Agitated, it attacks Roylet, who had been waiting for it to return after killing Helen. Holmes reveals to Watson that Roylet plotted to remove both the daughters before they married because he would have lost most of the fortune he controlled when the daughters took with them the money left to them by their dead mother. So now let's begin the story, The Adventure of the Speckled Band. Students, here adventure means an unusual and exciting or a daring experience. And speckle means a small spot or patches of color. Band here refers belt or a material used as a fastener or to a small group of musicians and singers who play and rock music. But actually here in this story the speckle band means to the poisonous snake. It was in early April that a young lady arrived to meet Sherlock Holmes and here the young lady is referred to Helen Stoner. Good morning madam, said Holmes cheerily. Draw to the fire for I observe that you are shivering. So Holmes thought that um, Helen was shivering so she told her to draw up to the fire so that she would feel the warmth of the fire. And she said that no, it was not because of cold that she is feeling shivering. It is because of the fear which makes her shiver. Mr. Holmes, it is terror, said the woman in a low voice. She raised her veil as she spoke and we could see that her face was drawn and grey. So, as they were speaking, he could see that Helen's face had become pale and dull with restless and frightening eyes. She now introduces herself to Holmes that her name is Helen Stoner and she lives with her stepfather, Dr. Grimsby Rowlett of Stock Moray. When Dr. Rowlett was in India, he married my mother, Mrs. Stoner, the young widow of Major General Stoner. My twin sister Julia and I were only two years old at the time of their mother's marriage. But their mother left her fortune to Dr. Roylet entirely with a provision that a certain annual sum be given to each of them in the event of their marriage. Shortly after they returned to England, their mother died. Dr. Roller then took them to live with him in the old manor house at Stock Moran. Provision here means a condition or arrangement in a legal document. But after that, a terrible change came over their stepfather. He used to shut himself in the house and very rarely he came out, except to indulge in quarrels with whoever might cross his path. He had a passion for Indian animals and so he has a chetak and a baboon which are feared by the villagers 
almost as much as their master it has been 2 years ago of julia's death and it is for her death that helen wished to speak to homes julia went to visit her aunt near her two years ago and there she got engaged to an officer from the marines her step father did not object to the marriage but within a fortnight of the day which had been fixed for the wedding a terrible event occurred which has deprived her of her only companion pray be more precise as to the details said holmes and that night her sister left her room next door to her stepfather and came to her my dear refers to helen tell me helen she said and then she asked had she ever heard any whistle in the dead of the night she denied because during the last few nights about 3 in the morning she could hear a low clear whistle and with that she went to her room a few moments later she heard her key turn in the lock she couldn't sleep that night i hear refers to julia she had a vague feeling that something terrible might happen the wind was howling outside and the rain was beating against the windows suddenly there burst a wild scream in her sister's voice as she opened her door she heard a low whistle her sister appeared at the door her face blanched with terror as she fell to the ground she shrieked and she cried oh my god helen it was the band the speckled band she pointed in the direction of her stepfather's room but a fresh convulsion seized her and choked her words here con- convulsion means violent shaking of the body that cannot be controlled she then rushed calling loudly for her stepfather so that he could send for the medical aid from the village but all efforts were in vain then two years had passed since then and helen's life had been lonelier than ever but a month ago she had proposed to a friend for marriage her stepfather did not oppose to the match and they were married in spring two days ago some repairs were started in her room and she had to move into the chamber in which julia died imagine her terror then when last night she suddenly heard the low whistle which had heralded her sister's death she sprang up and lit the lamp but nothing could be visible she was too shaken to go to bed and as soon as a day broke she came there to ask for his advice after a long silence horn said if they were to come we are refers to homes and mr watson to stoke moren stoke moren it would be possible for them to see those rooms without the knowledge of their stepfather as he wanted to investigate the room as it happens he spoke of coming into the town and for some important business and it was probable that he will be away all day and it would be possible for homes and watson to investigate the rooms in and then she would expect them early in the afternoon and then helen takes her leave what do you think of it all watson asked sherlock holmes leaning back in his chair it seems to be a most dark and a sinister case replied sherlock holmes dark enough and sinister enough and then watson and holmes walked down to dr dr scommins where he hoped to get some information which may help them to investigate in that matter here dr scommins refers 
a building in London occupied by the College of Advocates and Doctors of Law where there were courts dealing with marriage and wills and so on. It was nearly one o'clock then. Holmes returned from his excursions and he had seen the will of the deceased wife. He said that was written in the paper that each daughter can claim an income of 250 pounds in the case of marriage. Therefore, if both girls had married, the doctor would have had a mere pittance. Here, pittance means a very small amount of money. That means he would inherit the property of Mrs. Stoner. Even if one of them was getting married, it would ruin him. And then Watson, if he was ready, they would proceed to stock Moray. Then it was a perfect sunny day when they arrived at the manor's house and there doesn't seem any great need for repairs, repairs at the end wall. Holmes remarked examining Mrs. Stoker's former room. Then Helen believed that it was an excuse to move her from her room. That is suggestive. They moved on to the chamber which Miss Stoner was using then, in which her sister had met her fate. So, what is that bell used for? Holmes asked, pointing to a thick bell rope which hung down beside the bed. It looks nearer than the other things. Yes, it was put there only a couple of years ago replied Helen and it goes to the housekeeper's room. Holmes spent some time running up his eye up and down the wall and finally he looked thoroughly and took the bell rope in his hand and gave it a brick tug. Why? It is a dummy. It is not even attached to a wire. They could see now that it is it was fastened to a hook just above the little opening for the ventilator the room had certain strange features what a fool a builder must be to open a ventilator into another room when he might have opened it out to the fresh air replied holmes and then he would notice that the bed was clamped to the floor and with their permission, Miss Stoner, they would now look at the other rooms. They would investigate to the other rooms. Dr. Rollett's chamber was larger than that of his stepdaughter's. Holmes walked around and examined the rooms with keen interest. Then he asked, was there any cat there? Then Helen replied that no, no idea at all about the cat. Then look at this. He took out a small saucer of milk from under the bed. After that, Holmes turned out to the hostess. It is important, Miss Toner, that she would follow her, their advice in every respect. In the first place, both his friend and Holmes must spend the night in, their, in her room. Both Miss Stoner and Holmes took at him in astonishment. Holmes continued, You must be in your room when your stepfather comes back said Holmes to Helen. Then when you hear him retire and when he goes back to sleep for the night, then she must open the shutters of her window and put the lamp there as a signal to them and then withdraw quietly into the room which she used to occupy and the rest 
Holmes should leave Helen should leave to them. Then Miss Helen Stoner agreed. Holmes and Watson went outside to wait near the gates. At about nine o'clock, the light was put out and all was dark in the direction of the manor house. Two hours passed slowly and then at the stroke of eleven, they saw a single bright light shining into their direction. And it was their signal, said Holmes. They entered the grounds through the gaps in the old wall. And once they were inside the bedroom, Holmes whispered in Watson ear. The lead sound would be fatal to their plants. To their plants and they must sit without a light. And then he said to Watson not to fall asleep because their very life may depend upon it. Holmes had brought with him a long thin cane which he placed beside him on the bed. He laid a box of matches and a stump of candle too. Then he turned down the lamp and there they left, they were in darkness. For the next few minutes they sat in a state of dreadful whistle, keeping themselves awake and then Holmes started sweating from tension. Suddenly a sound became audible, a very gentle soothing sound like that of a small jet of steam escaping continually from a kettle. The moment they heard it, Holmes sprang from the bed, stuck a match and latched furiously with his can at the bell pull. And then he asked Watson to see, he shouted and cried. He had seat to strike and was gazing up at the ventilator. Then suddenly the silence of the night was broken by the most horrible cry he had ever heard. What can it mean? I gasped. It means that it is all over Holmes answered and they will now enter to Dr. Rollett's room, which met their eyes. Dr. Rollett sat on a wooden chair. His eyes were fixed in a dreadful, rigid stare at the corner of the ceiling. Bound tightly round his head was a peculiar yellow band with brownish speckles. The band, the speckled band, whispered Holmes. Sherlock Holmes took a step forward and in an instant his strange headgear began to move. From among his hair there arose the squat diamond shaped head and puffed neck of a loathsome serpent. Here squat means short and wide and loathsome means extremely unpleasant. Then Holmes made a statement that it was a swamp adder, the deadliest snake in India. He said to Watson that Dr. Rollett must have died within 10 seconds of being beaten by this deadliest snake. He then said that violence does in truth recoil upon the violent, means Dr. Rollett is poisoned by the snake that which he used to kill Julia. Here it means as you show, so shall you reap. Let us put this creature back into its den and let the police know what had happened. Holtz then explained the case to him on their way back. His attention was speedily drawn to the ventilator and to the bell rope, which hung down to the bed. The discovery that was a dummy and the bed was clamped to the floor made him suspect that the rope was there as a bridge for something passing through the hole and coming to the bed. The idea of a snake then occurred to him. He coupled it with his knowledge that the doctor kept 
supply of creatures from India. And then he thought of the vessel. Of course, that he must recall the snake before the morning light rebelled it to others. And he had trained it probably by the use of the milk which he saw the saucer underneath the bed and return him when called. He would put it through the ventilator at the hour that he thought best with the certainty that would crawl down the rope and land on the bed. It might or might not bite the occupant. Perhaps she might escape every night for a week. But sooner or later she would fall with tail. When he heard the creature hiss, Holmes instantly stuck the match and attacked it. And with the result of driving it back through the ventilator, he then added that Holmes and also with the result of causing it to turn upon its master on the other side. And then Holmes said that some of the blows of his can came home and roused its snakish temper so that it attacked the first person it saw and in this way he had no doubt indirectly responsible for Dr. Grimm's by Roylott's death. But he couldn't say that it was likely to weigh very heavily on his conscience.